mass of the atom is within the nucleus. And now, when we study this nucleus, uh, the units change. In atom, the unit of length that we use was angstrom. But in nucleus, the unit that we use is Fermi. One Fermi is 10 raised to the power minus 15 meter. The unit of energy will also change. In atom, the unit of, what was the unit of energy that we use in atom? Anyone? Electron volt. Yeah. Electron volt. But when we study nucleus, then the unit of energy is mega electron. One mega electron volt means 10 raised to the power 6 electron. So this is how the unit changes. Even the unit of mass will change. We don't consider mass in kg now. We take mass in atomic mass unit. One atomic mass unit is 1.66 into 10 raised to the power of minus 37. Now we need all masses, the mass of electron, the mass of proton, the mass of neutrons in terms of uh, AMU. So the mass of electron is 0 0.00055. It's basically some 5 or something, but you can round it off up to 0 0.0055 atomic mass. Rate. Mass of proton, if you take, mass of proton is 1.0073 atomic mass. Rate. If you take mass of neutron, then this is 1.0086 atomic mass. Rate. If you take mass of hydrogen atom, and what is hydrogen atom? Hydrogen atom is nothing but electron plus proton. So means you will add this and this. When you add this, it's around some 1.0078 atomic mass. We sometimes express atomic mass unit by just U also. So this is mass of electron. This is the mass of proton. This is the mass of neutron. If you want these masses in kg, then in kg, this is 9.1 into 10 raised to the power of minus 31 kg. Proton is 1.66 into 10 raised to the power of minus 27 kg. This is 1.67 into 10 raised to the power of minus 27 kg. So these are the masses of electrons, protons, and neutrons in atomic mass unit. See, in CBSC paper, the masses of these charged particles is given, but in SI unit. Usually, they don't give masses in atomic mass unit. And to solve problems of this nucleus, you should know these masses in atomic mass. So you should know masses of electron in AMU. You should know the mass of proton, the mass of neutron, the mass of hydrogen. So you have to remember all these after this so if i take a nucleus huh? if i take this nucleus so now we don't we will not consider electrons huh? we, we, we have already studied the entire atom now we'll study just this nucleus so if i look at this nucleus what are the constituents of the nucleus uh you could issue the mass of electron sorry you could issue the mass of electron Yes, yes, 0 0.0055. So what are the constituents of the nucleus? The constituents of the nucleus are neutrons and protons. So the nucleus have neutrons and protons. So the constituents of the nucleus are neutrons and protons. So you have neutrons and protons within the nucleus. And these neutrons and protons... Uh, makes 99% of the mass of the atom. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the mass of the atom is within the nucleus. Now, let's see what type of forces are acting within the nucleus. Both the protons are positively charged. So, one positively charged proton should ripple another positively charged proton. So, proton and proton should ripple each other with electric force. Neutrons are neutral particles. So, they will not interact with protons so electrically. So there is no electric force between neutrons and protons. But yes, proton and proton will repel each other. So if only electric forces were present there, then you then uh, you can't form a system like nucleus. Nucleus is a bounded system. 
to make a bounded system you need attractive forces but proton proton repulsion is a repulsive force it cannot make a bounded system so along with electric force nuclear forces are acting within the nucleus you have nuclear forces which are acting within the nucleus you have nuclear forces which are acting within the nucleus these nuclear forces can attract two protons these nuclear forces this nuclear forces huh? nuclear force this can attract protons it can attract neutrons as well so nuclear force does not depends upon charge when you talk about nuclear force charge does not matter even for nuclear force protons and neutrons are not two different charged particles for nuclear force protons and neutrons are the same particle it does not differentiate between the protons and the neutrons so the nuclear force so when you talk about nuclear force we call it as nucleons for nuclear force neutrons and protons are not two different charged particles they are the same type of particles and they are collectively known as nucleons so when we say nucleons that means we are talking about a proton or we are talking about neutron so protons and neutrons are collectively known as nucleons so these were some basic introduction of nucleus and the constituents of the nucleus there is one more thing you can calculate energy corresponding to one atomic mass you can calculate energy corresponding to one atom mass simple this expression e is equal to mc square if you have mass you can convert that mass into energy so here your mass is what at one atomic mass unit if you want to convert this one atomic mass unit this is 1.66 into 10 raised to the power minus 27 p is speed of light which is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 square what will be the unit of this calculation now what will be the unit of this calculation no mega electron volt <coughs> no it won't be in mega electron volt i am putting mass in kg i am putting c is meter per second the unit will be joule right you have to convert it in mega electron volt how will you convert this in mega electron volt how will you convert this number which is in joule in mega electron volt yashika So divide by one point six six into ten to the power minus nineteen. Minus nineteen. This is electron volts, not yet mega electron volt. Then you will divide it by one million, one mega, ten raised power six. This is mega electron volt. When you do all these calculations, it comes out to be nine thirty one point five mega electron. Means one. Atomic mass unit is equal to nine hundred and thirty-one point five mega electron. So this is the relation between atomic mass unit and mega electron volt. One atomic mass unit is corresponding to nine thirty-one point five mega electron volt of energy. So you will this will be a very helpful relation. You will use this relation. There are few more things. Do you know what is atomic number, sir? Fullo. Sefula, what is yes. atomic number? Uh, so the number of electron present in an atom. Oh. Uh, basically, the number of protons. Huh? So atomic number means the number of protons, because number of electrons can change, na, if, if an atom gets ionized. So these are the number of protons. What is mass number, Sakina Bas? What is mass number exactly? mass number is number of proton plus number of neutrons that's mass we represent atomic number by z and we represent mass number by a so if i take an element x we usually write in this way the numbers which are above the symbol of the element is mass number and the number which is below the symbol is atomic number 
So if I give you one example, like if I take iron, it's 56. What is the atomic number of iron? Is it 26 or 27? Atomic number of iron? 26. 26. Huh? So this is iron. So what are the number of uh, neutrons in iron? Sakina bus. Sakina, are you in class? Sakina bus. Uh, yes, sir. Sakina, this is, what is this? 56. Atomic number, mass number? Uh, sir, mass number. And this one? Atomic number. What about the number of neutrons? How will you calculate number of neutrons from this data? Number of neutrons, a simple calculation, mass number minus atomic number, right? Yes, sir. Mass number minus atomic number. So this is third. So this is how we calculate this. There's a few more definitions, which are basically a part of chemistry syllabus, but we would use them in some conceptual questions. So let's revise. What are isotopes? Sir, can you scroll up, please? Yes, yes. I will give time to write these things. I'm just discussing the basic uh, part of nucleus. I'll scroll up and you can write from the starting. What are isotopes? Okay, Anchika, what are isotopes? Sir, same, um, hmm. same atomic number and uh, different mass number. Very good. So isotopes are elements having same atomic number. Same atomic number and different mass. So the elements which have same atomic number and different mass number are known as isotopes. Then what are isobars? Isobars, they have same mass number but different atomic number. So isobars have same Z. Sorry, not same Z. They have same mass number, same mass number, different atomic. And there's one more term in chemistry, which is known as isotones. What are isotones again? The elements uh, which have the, the nucleus will have the same number of neutrons and different protons. Same number of neutrons. So isotones have exactly the same number of neutrons. So we have isotopes, we have isobars, we have isotopes. Okay, so that was about the introduction of nuclear. Just noted down all those. Things. You may not get any direct question on these things, but we'll use this data in the next section. And just tell me if you have any doubt in any section. Tell me once you have written, I'll scroll it.
Can I scroll it? Seven minutes. Sir. See, you have to remember this data, huh? this whole, all these masses. Remember these four masses, electron, proton, neutron, and hydrogen atom. In atomic mass unit, not in kg. In kg, it will be given in question paper. The value of Planck constant, these masses in kg, this will be given in question paper. But atomic mass unit is usually not given. You have to memorize these relations. Um, sir, for neutron in atomic mass unit, is it? 1.0086. Okay, sir. Then, sir. Can I scroll it now? Yes. One minute, sir. And again, you have to uh, memorize this data as well. This one. One atomic mass unit is 931.5. You have to memorize this. Yes, I done. Can I scroll it now? One minute, sir. Then, sir. Uh, the next is size of nucleus. So the first topic from which questions comes is size of size of nucleus and density of nucleus. Size of nucleus. See nucleus. The size of the shape of nucleus is 
it's spherical. Due to attractive forces, this nucleus or these nucleons acquire the shape of the of a sphere. So the spherical. The radius is R. See, what is nucleus? Nucleus is just the combination of neutrons and protons. It's not like a spherical structure in which you fill neutrons and protons. It's just a combination of neutron and protons. The simplest nucleus is hydrogen atom. It have only one proton. Then you have helium, which have two protons and two neutrons. That's it. So in helium, there's nothing else than two protons and two neutrons. There's no spherical structure in which you are filling these protons and neutrons. It's just the combination. Due to these strong forces, this combination looks like spherical. That's why we calculate radius here. So the size of the nucleus should depend upon the number of neutrons and protons. After all, nucleus is nothing but the combination of neutrons and protons. And the number of neutrons and protons is mass number. So if we consider nucleus to be spherical in shape, then the radius of nucleus should depend upon the mass number. So you can write this in this way that radius of nucleus, if I consider R as the radius of nucleus, the radius of nucleus, then you can write that radius as R is R naught A to the power 1 by 3. Where R naught is a constant and R naught, the value of R naught is 1.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 15, which you can write 1.2 for me. This is R0, which is 1.2. And A is the mass number. A is mass number. So for the nuclei having different mass number, the radius will be different. So what about isobars? Isobars will have different mass radius or they will have same radius? If we talk about isobars, they will have different radius or same radius? Yes, Anshika. Isobars will have different radius or will have same radius? Same mm. radius. They will have same radius because they have same mass number. If mass number is same, that means radius will remain same. After size of nucleus, the next term is the density of nucleus. The next is the density of nucleus. How we calculate density? Density is just the ratio of mass of body and volume. So if we calculate the mass of nucleus, see how to calculate the mass of nucleus. We know that nucleus consists of neutrons and protons. Although masses of neutrons and protons are not exactly equal, but there is very minor difference. So at least for the sake of this type of calculation, we are assuming that mass of neutron and mass of proton is almost same. So if I ask you to calculate the total mass of the nucleus, so the total mass of the nucleus will be the mass of all neutrons plus mass of all protons. Or I can say that mass of nucleus is mass number multiplied by mass of all neutrons. I am considering protons and neutrons are of equal mass. Is it clear? This is statement, Nazia, Safula, Anshika. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for volume, we can use 4 by 3 pi r cube, right? So when we put these values, it's A into mass of neutron divided by 4 by 3 pi. What is R? R we did in the previous section. R is R naught. A to the power 1 by 3 whole cube. Now, you can let's substitute the value of mass of nucleus. If we want to calculate this density in SI unit, then the mass of uh, neutron is 1.67 into 10 raised to the power minus 27. This is mass of neutron. And this whole is the mass of nucleus. A into the mass of neutron is the mass of nucleus. 4 by 3 pi r naught cube. A to the power 1 by 3 and cube. So see this 3 and 3 gets cancelled out just A. So A and A will cancel out. So if you look at this expression very carefully, all terms are constant. This is constant, R not constant, 4 by 3 by constant. When we put the values of these constants, it comes out to be 
uh, although no one will ask this number from you, but you should at least know that this is 2.97 into 10 raised to the power 17 kg per meter. This is huge. You should remember this order of magnitude, 10 raised to the power 17. The density of iron is of the order of 10 raised to the power 4. So we're talking about something which have this density of the order of 10 raised power 17. It's huge. So 2.97 into 10 raised power 17 kg per meter. This is roughly the density of the nucleus. And this is absolutely independent of mass number and atomic number. Which means throughout your periodic table, all nuclei will have same density. All nuclei have same density. Means it's independent of mass number and atomic. Okay, just note it down. Then we'll do one question on this concept. Can I scroll it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you have two nuclei. Let's name them as X and Y. The mass number is 8 and 27. Calculate the ratio of their radii and their densities and write your answer in chat room. Huh? I'm the co-host. A simple formula based thing, just calculate and write your answer in chat room. So, the mass number of 
element x and element y are given, which are 8 and 27. You just have to calculate the ratio of their radii and the, their densities. Do it fast is a two marker question. Very good, Nabil. So I got one answer from Nabil only. Good, Noha. What about densities, Noha? Good. What about the rest? Yashika, Naziha, Shafulla? No straightforward calculation. Amir, you Okay, Nazia, good. Just three answers. What about the rest? Yashika? Yes, Akina, it's correct. Avishika, Anshika. Begin Abbas, Safullah. No straightforward calculations. Kya karo tum log? See, <coughs> the radius is this, na? No, Safullah. It's not 8 by 27. Rx is R0. A to the power 1 by 3. A is 8. You have 1 by 3 also, na? Then you have Ry is also R0. It's 27 to the power 1 by 3. So this R0 and R0 will cancel. 8 to the power 1 by 3 is 2. 27 to the power 3 by 3. So the ratio of Rx and Ry is 2 by 3. And if you want to calculate the ratio of densities, density of x by density of y will be same because nuclear density is independent of this thing. Uh, mass number and atomic number. Densities will remain same. Sakina Abbas, Anshika, is it clear? Yes, sir. Yashika? Yes, sir. Okay, the next is mass defect and binding energy. Mass defect and binding energy. A very, very important topic. See, what do you mean by mass defect? See, uh, in a very uh, general sense, if you have some 3 gram of reactant 1, uh, 3 gram of some reactant 1, and you have some 2 gram of reactant 2. These are reactants, 3 gram and 2 gram. So you expect when 3 gram of one substance combined with 2 gram of another substance, the product should be of 5 gram. But let's say the mass of the product is 4.5 gram. This is product. So your reactant is total mass of reactant is 5 gram. The mass of your product is 4.5 gram. So there is a defect of 0.5 gram. So there is a defect of 0.5 gram, right? 5 minus 4.5, which is 0.5 gram. This defect is known as mass. 
So in general sense, mass defect simply means the difference in the mass of reactant and the mass of product. It could be anything. It can happen in your nuclei. It can happen in a nuclear reaction. It can happen in a particle reaction anywhere. This is a general term. If the mass of reactant is greater than the mass of product, that means there is some loss there. And a mass of product is less than the mass of reactant. That loss in mass is known as mass. To be specific, in the case of nucleus, what happens is when neutrons and protons combine to form nucleus, we expect that the mass of nucleus should be equal to the mass of all neutrons and all protons, but it doesn't happen. The mass of nucleus is less than the mass of all neutrons and protons. So the neutrons and protons are your reactant. Nucleus is your product. The mass of reactant is greater. The mass of product is less. The difference between their masses is what we call mass defect. So mass defect is the difference. In mass of nucleons so when i say nucleons that i am collectively uh, calling neutrons and protons difference in mass of nucleons and mass of nucleus is what we call mass defect that's mass so how we calculate mass defect? To calculate mass defect, what we will do? We will take mass of all protons. So what are the number of protons in an element? Let's say an element have atomic number of Z. What are the number of protons in that element? Z. Z. So this is the mass of all protons. Z times MP, mass of all protons. What is the mass of all neutrons? That's A minus Z times MN. This is the mass of all neutrons. So mass of all protons plus mass of all neutrons minus the mass of nucleus. So let's call this as nucleus of self element X having mass number A and big number C. So this is your reactant. And this is your product. So it is just the difference between the mass of reactant and mass of product. That's mass. mass. There's one more way to calculate the mass spec. See, in this expression, you need mass of nucleus. But it may be like possible, like in a question, instead of mass of nucleus, the mass of atom is given. So this is Z times mass of all protons plus A minus Z times mass of all neutrons minus mass of nucleus. If you have mass of atom, Cephala, how will you calculate mass of nucleus if mass of atom is given? I don't have mass of nucleus now. I have mass of atom. From atom, how will you calculate the nucleus, mass of nucleus? Cephala. Nazia, how will you calculate mass of nucleus from the mass of atom? Mass of uh, the atomic number. You have mass of atom. Asking how will you calculate mass of nucleus from mass of atom? Yashika, you have mass of atom. You need mass of nucleus. What will you do? Nabil? I'll subtract the mass of the nu neutrons. Electrons, right? Yes, so if you have mass of atom, and from the mass of atom, if you can say you have atom X, you can subtract the mass of all electrons. So what are the, so how many electrons are there in an atom having mass number A and atomic number Z? Z. Z. Because in an atom, if an atom is neutral, so number of neut electrons and protons is equal. So this is Z times the mass of all electrons. 
Nazia, Sakina, is it clear? Yes, so if you have yes, mass sir. of atom, to get mass of nucleus, you will subtract the mass of all electrons. So delta M is it's Z times mass of proton plus A minus Z times mass of neutrons minus its mass of atom, which is X A Z plus Z times mass of all electrons. So just look at the first term and that last term. What you can do is you can take Z common here. So when you take Z as common here, you have you take Z as common and you are left with just mass of proton plus mass of electron plus A minus Z mass of all neutrons minus mass of atom which is X A Z. And what is mass of proton plus mass of electron? What you will get if you add one proton and electron? One hydrogen atom. One hydrogen atom. So this is the mass of hydrogen atom. So you can write the mass defect as Z. It's mass of hydrogen atom plus A minus Z. Mass of all neutrons minus mass of atom. X having mass number A at so this is the mass defect. So and remember this is the mass of hydrogen. So use this expression if mass of atom is given. Use this expression if you have mass of nucleus. This is how we calculate mass defect. And where this mass goes, this mass gets converted into energy known as binding energy. So this delta M gets converted into binding energy. So you need binding energy, which is delta M A to C square. So this mass, where this mass goes, this mass gets converted into energy, which is known as binding energy, delta M into C square. So you have two options. You can either take your mass in kg and multiply it with c square or the more practical approach is take your mass in atomic mass unit and just multiply it with 931.5. This is more practical approach and you will get your energy in mega electron. Because if you st start doing delta m into c square, you will first convert your mass into kg, then you will multiply with c, then you will convert it in mega electron. What is the lengthy calculation? So it's better keep your mass in atomic mass unit, multiply it with 931.5 mega electron volt. This is binding energy. Okay, so what happens with this energy is when some neutrons and protons combine to form a nucleus, this is an exothermic reaction. What happens is when neutrons and protons combine and they form nucleus, there is a mass defect and energy corresponding to this mass defect gets liberated in the environment it gets emitted in the environment is an exothermic reaction so now once you have nucleus during formation of nucleus was uh, it, the reaction was exothermic the energy gets liberated in the environment now if you want to break this nucleus you have to provide the system the same energy which was liberated during the formation of nucleus that's this is the binding energy the definition is energy required energy required to break nucleus. So the energy that you need to break the nucleus is known as binding energy. Then you have one more thing which is known as packing fraction. Packing fraction. So what does packing fraction means? Packing fraction means mass defect divided by mass number. There's one more thing which is known as binding energy per nucleon. So binding energy per nucleon means it's binding energy divided by the mass number. This is binding energy per nucleon, binding energy per mass number. 
So this is the energy required to break the entire nucleus. Means is the energy required to free all nucleons. Means you want to send all neutrons and protons to infinity. So the energy required to do that thing is binding energy. But binding energy per nucleon means energy required to free one proton or neutron. So the energy that you need to emit uh, to free one proton or neutron is known as the binding energy per nucleon. But binding energy is the energy required to free all, all protons and all neutrons. So break, energy required to break the nucleus is binding energy. Is it clear? Doubts, discussions? Sir, uh, in NCRT, we have only the first equation for mass reflection. Uh, basically, what NCRT do is, NCRT write this equation, uh, this equation. And if you go to the questions of NCRT, NCRT gives, NCRT never mentioned the masses of nucleus or masses of atom. If nothing is mentioned, that means it's a mass of atom. And when you go to the questions, in the question it's written, mass of proton is 1.0078. And Nabil, what is 1.0078? That's mass of proton or mass of hydrogen atom? Either one. Sorry? Either one. Hydrogen yes. atom, right? 1.0078 is the mass of hydrogen atom. Yes, sir. So this is a default uh, thing. Basically, in nuclear physics, we sometimes call hydrogen atom as proton. So sometimes NCRT do it reads its it type proton and then write its mass as 1.0078. So it's not proton, it's hydrogen atom. And if the mass of proton is given as 1.0078, then he will give the mass of atom. He is writing this equation, but when you check the calculation, the solved example is actually doing this calculation. That's the problem with NCRT. If mass of nucleus is given, then this equation is fine. But whenever NCRT gives mass of atom, along with mass of atom, he says mass of proton is 1.0078. That means that's not the mass of proton. That is the mass of hydrogen. That's basically a casual notation of nucleus physics in which, in which we call even an hydrogen atom as a proton. So, okay. so NCRT have written this equation, but in numericals, you're using both the equations as a thing. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, basically, the NCRT, the theory of NCRT is not complete without its numericals. So this is how the NCRT is written. A major part is in theory, but a good part of theory is in numericals also. So unless you combine both the things, the theory is not complete. So NCRT gives this formula in theory, and then he gives numerical. In numerical, he says, okay, the mass of proton is 1.0078. And then it will strike, okay, is going to this equation now. He's asking you to do all these calculations and come to this equation.
Just one minute, huh? So then, Written? Oh, sir, could you scroll a bit uh, up? up? Just the previous step. Yes, Namil. Can I scroll now? Yes, sir.
Yes, everyone have written up to here. Anshika, Sefulla, Nazia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's start with the questions. So, on the basis of this binding energy and mass defect, you get two types of questions. So, first, let's do this question. This is from NCRT. So, see, Nabil, let's look at this question. Huh? I was talking about this question. So, this is iron, okay? The mass of iron is given. It's not mentioned whether this is the mass of nucleus or is the mass of atom. If nothing is mentioned, that means it's atom always. <coughs> so, if you have mass of atom, so to calculate mass defect, what you will do? So, Nabil, you will use the mass of atom or you will use mass of hydrogen, sorry, mass of proton or hydrogen atom? Mass of hydrogen atom. A minus it. And the calculations are quite lengthy in nucleus, nuclear physics. Mass of nucleus, which is uh, iron. Uh, so the mass defect is Z, which is 26. Mass of hydrogen, which is 1.0078. Plus A minus Z, A is 56 minus 26. Mass of neutrons, which is 1.0086. Minus mass of nucleus, which is not mass nucleus, mass of atom. So mass of atom is 55.934939. Usually, the calculations in these topics are very, very lengthy. So let me use my calculator. Okay, let me use my calculator. But you have to do it on your own in your exam. These are questions from the previous years. You will get these type these type of calculation exams also. One point zero zero seven eight. So that is twenty six point. Two zero two eight plus it's thirteen two one point zero zero eight six. It's three thirty point two five eight minus it's fifty five point nine three four nine three nine. So this is three six point two zero two eight. So this is zero point five two five eight atomic mass unit. That is the mass defect. So if you have mass defect, you can calculate energy. For binding energy, you can either use delta M into C square or you can just take your mass defect in atomic mass unit and just multiply it with 931.5 mega electron. This is what we will do. So we will take the mass defect 0.5258 and we'll multiply it with 931.5. So it comes out to be into 931.5. It's 489.8395. This much of mega electron. Anshika, what you will do if you are supposed to calculate binding energy per nucleon for iron? I calculated the binding energy. How will you calculate binding energy per nucleon? So again, Abbas, how will you calculate binding energy per nucleon? Shafullah, <coughs> binding energy per nucleon. Um, sir, binding energy per mass number. Mm. So binding energy is 489.8395. Divided by mass number, which is 56. So if I divide this thing by 56, 
8.75 mega electron volt per nucleon. This is the binding energy of iron. And binding energy of iron is maximum. Slow it down. Is this calculation clear? When you have doubt, I can repeat this calculation. Sakina, Anshika. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, can scroll up. Mm -hmm. So, Bismuth will be your homework. Huh? Let's try Bismuth at home. Um, so for this calculation, can we take approximations or should we take? No, no, no. You have to do calculation up to four decimal places. Because if you round it off, you'll get zero. In nuclear physics, you have to do calculations up to four decimal places. They design paper very properly. Like if he is giving this this type of question, then he will. Uh, we won't give another numerical type question. We'll give conceptual questions so that you can save some time and can invest it. The paper is very balanced. Yes, can I scroll it off? Written? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's do, let's do another type of question. They are interesting. Like the questions based on fission and fusion. Do you know what is fission? Nuclear fission? One nucleus splitting into smaller nucleus. So for heavy nucleus, divides into comparative light nuclear yeah? that's fusion. breaking of nucleus. fusion two light nuclei combine to form a heavy nuclei we'll discuss the definition but for the sake of numericals you should have an idea of fusion and fusion so on the basis of binding energy, you can explain why energy is released in fission and when energy will release in fission or in fusion. So whenever a system having low binding energy gets converted into a system having high binding energy. So in nuclear fission, what happens is this system have low binding energy. This system have high binding energy. 
So whenever a system having low binding energy gets converted into a system having high binding energy, the energy corresponding to the difference gets released. Let's say this system have a binding energy of 3 mega electron volt. And this both the nuclei, which you obtain in fission, have binding energy of 4 mega electron volt. And the energy corresponding to 1 mega electron volt will release in that MOSFET. This is the source of energy of a nuclear reaction. This is what happens in the fission and what happens in fusion. Fusion also, this will have less binding energy. This will have more binding energy. So always, whenever a system having low binding energy get converted into a system having high binding energy, the energy corresponding to the difference in their binding energy gets released. Energy gets released. So it would be better if you can write this statement. Whenever a system having low binding energy gets converted into a system having high binding energy, then the energy corresponding to the difference in energy level gets released. Energy corresponding to difference in energy level gets released. This is the source of energy of a sun. This is the source of energy of a nuclear power plant or anything. So if you have written this statement, let's move on to this question. This is one, one question based on this concept. So just note down the question and we'll start the calculations. Note down this question. Um, sir, can you show the definitions, please? Mm -hmm. There are a few theoretical terms here. We'll discuss that in through the notes only. Yeah? There is one term which is uh, this binding energy curve. We'll discuss that curve through the notes. Not down the question. <clears throat> Deuterium means H2 means uh, this have one proton and one neutron also. So two deuterium combine to form a helium. So see mass number two, mass number two will combine and this is mass number four. Atomic number one, atomic number two will combine. This is atomic number two. So Nazia, out of this hydrogen and helium, which one should have higher binding energy so that energy gets released? Helium. helium. Yes, helium. The product should have higher binding energy, then only energy will release. So let's calculate the energy of the reactant. See, per nucleon in deuterium is 1.1 electron volt. This is 1.1 electron volt binding energy per nucleon. So the total binding energy will be 1.1 multiplied by 2. Because hydrogen have two nucleons, mass number is 2. Similarly here, 1.1 multiplied by 2. This is the binding energy. And for helium, the energy per nucleon is 7 mega electron volt. So this will be 4 into 7. This is the binding energy of two hydrogens, deuterium. This is the binding energy of helium. So the energy released would be energy released would be 28 this minus this so this is 2.2 2.2 4.4 so this will be uh 28 4 23.6 mega electron 
this is another type of question on binding energy and binding energy for nuclear. There's uh, there's no question of this category in NCRT, but if you look at look at previous year's question, then I believe you will find these type of questions also. Not at all. Is it clear? Noah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not at all. Ritin, can you move on to next topic? Yes, sir. The fuller? Yes, sir, done. The fuller written? Anshika, Sakina, Yashika, Britain? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move on to next. Okay, there's uh, one more topic in uh, nuclear physics. So I'm just, that's theoretical. You won't get any calculations from there, but it's an important topic. Mm. So I will not write, but see, now you have some homework. You have to go through this thing this topic properties of nuclear force you there's very uh, few chances of getting question from this topic but at least you should know this this one this is your homework everything else we have now, this is important binding energy This is binding energy curve, and these are conclusions, the important questions from these curves, these four points. You can get these four points in exams also. So what is binding energy curve? On y-axis, we take binding energy per nucleon, and on x-axis, we take mass number. So we plotted binding energy per nucleon and mass number. So you can see as you increase this binding energy mass number, the binding energy increases. There are few dips here. We'll explain the dips later. But overall, when you increase the mass number the binding energy increases which is very obvious because when you increase mass number you're increasing the number of protons and neutrons means you are increasing the mass defect you're increasing the probability of mass defect so mass defect will increase and binding energy should decrease from here 30 up to here 170 the binding energy is almost constant so this feature of the graph shows that nuclear forces are short range forces. After 170, the binding energy decreases. This is due to proton proton repulsion. These dips are also due to proton proton repulsion. Due to proton proton repulsion, repulsive forces act, which decreases the binding energy. 
So these are the conclusions. Binding energy is constant. 8 to 130, 730 is maximum at this point. Force is attractive, short range forces. Then again, the same thing of fission and fusion. Means if two light nuclei fuse to form a heavy nuclei, then the heavy nuclei should have higher binding energy than the lighter one. Then only energy will release. If a heavy nuclei break into two light nuclei, then the lighter nuclei should have more binding energy than the parent nuclei. Otherwise, though, there won't be any uh, emission of energy. So these are the important points regarding this curve. I'll mention each and every point. Just go through these points, and this is something very, very important. This is very important. So with this, uh, so this is your homework. You will read these points, these pointers. You will read this thing, and then you will go through these points. So this nucleus is over. After nucleus, the next topic is semiconductor. So I'm not starting semiconductor today. We'll start it in the next class. So semiconductor will take, uh, if I go slow, then we'll take two lectures. That's it, this small topic. I'll stop here. You all have these notes, huh? Nazia, Sakina? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's stop here. If you have any doubts, we can discuss. Otherwise, I will leave. Class is over. If you have doubts, we can discuss. Thank you, sir. Sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.